Hey everyone, got a different kind of video for you all today. This is for your loved ones, friends, family, anyone who's looking to get a gift for the resident synth enthusiast in your life, but don't know what to get them for this holiday season, this video is for you. As a synth guy, I know that we are notoriously hard to pick gifts for. So I put together this quick and easy video with 10 gift ideas under $20 for the synth guy in your life. Now, if you're like me, when people ask you what you want for the holidays, you usually don't have that much of an answer other than a little bit of eggnog and whiskey and maybe a new sweater from my extremely patient mother. But when it comes to giving gifts, I take it extremely seriously. I wanna give people gifts that they'll use instead of, you know, something that looks cool sitting on a shelf gathering dust. Something like a tool or a gadget that will come up in everyday life. So I made this quick list of things that any synth enthusiast would be happy to have in their toolbox and nothing on this list costs over $20. Now, before we get started, let me take a quick second to say that if you like this video, remember to hit the thumbs up button and subscribe so you can be notified when I post new videos in the future. It's an awesome, quick, and easy way to support the channel. Number one, board brain splicks. The first item in my list is something that I discovered recently and I've been getting a ton of use out of. This is the splicks made by BoardBrain. It's an inline passive attenuator for Eurorack that has two inputs, a potentiometer knob, and an output jack. And they come with these little patch cables. It's a really great way, if you don't have enough attenuators in your system, to take a signal that's too strong, attenuate it, turn it down a little bit, and go to its destination. But that's not all they do. I picked this up a little while ago when I was building a patch on one of my small portable systems and I just didn't have enough attenuators or VCAs in the patch. So I picked the splicks up and I used it as an attenuator, but then I discovered that you can also mix two signals together and the potentiometer knob in the middle becomes a mix between the two signals, 100% one signal, 100% the other signal on the other side, or 50-50 in the middle and anything in between. Number two, Hosa 8th inch stereo breakout cables. No studio should be without these and I have two flavors to show you today. This one is an 8th inch stereo male connector to two mono female connectors and it's really useful for taking a stereo signal out of your phone and going into say a Eurorack for example, coming out of your Eurorack into two different things, splitting up a stereo signal, any number of a multitude of things. I am always looking for these, I always need more of them, and to have a couple laying around is infinitely useful. The other host of cable that I have is a stereo TRS eighth inch, just like the other cable, but it goes to two quarter inch monos for left and right, or tip and ring, if you're familiar with the TRS, tip, ring, and sleeve. And it's super useful for getting a signal from a small synth into a mixer, or your modular into a mixer, taking two signals out of, say, a rack unit and going down into one stereo connector, etc. You can always adapt this up to quarter inch if you need to. So I have a bunch of these around at any given time, and I'm always using them on projects. The next product is also made by Hosa, but I'm not sponsored by anyone. I just happen to like these products and Hosa is the brand that I have. Number three, universal power supply. These are powering multiple synths that you see behind me and they're really useful for having around if you pick up a used vintage synth on Craigslist, for example, and you don't have the wall wart power adapter, whatever, you can take one of these universal power supplies, put the right tip on, switch it to the right voltage, and immediately you're able to try out this new synth or drum machine or whatever you just picked up because companies don't all use the same power jack barrel size or voltage or polarity. You don't wanna blow out something by trying different power supplies that you already have in your collection and risk damaging an older unit. You wanna have something that's the right size, the right polarity, and the right voltage. So having a couple of these universal power supplies around at any given time is a good way to know that you'll always be able to power up 
any new gear that comes into your studio. Next up, our product that a lot of you probably already have, it's tip top stackable cables. Now these are kind of the industry standard for stackable cables and they kind of have the design down. These are a lot more durable than even non-stackable cables that I've come across. It allows you to take one signal and go multiple places, turn any jack basically into a passive multiple and they're really well built and well designed. They have a bunch of different lengths. They're color coded, so I find that yellow is the most useful length for the systems that I put together, but there are much longer and shorter ones as well. Now, these are under $10, which means they qualify for this list, but you never really want to have just one. So if you're buying these as a gift for some Eurorack fan in your life, make sure you pick up a handful. They will thank you. Next up on the list are Velcro cable organizers. Even without looking at your studio, I know that you need better cable management and cable organizers, Velcros, whatever they might be. I've seen plastic clips that do the same thing are incredibly useful. You can get a pack of like a hundred of these for pretty cheap and I have a day once every year where I just sit and I put a Velcro organizer on every single cable in my studio. Not only are they crucial for organizing and finding the right cable without turning your cable drawer into a rat's nest, they're also great for Velcroing cables underneath a desk or if you need to snake a cable run through your studio to organize it so that you're not pulling your hair out trying to figure out which cable is what later on. Next up, a cable organizer. I have a bunch of little patch cables on this cable organizer that is bolted to my desk. It's looking a little sad right now because a ton of my cables are out on projects. I'm using them, so I have them patched up right now. But when I'm done with those projects, they all get returned to this cable organizer right here. It's way better than keeping all your cables in a box or a bag. So they're right here when I need to patch up, say, the 2600, for example. The next three products are all things that I impulse purchased on Etsy in the past week and I haven't tried them yet because they haven't arrived, but they are what inspired me to do this video. I'm very excited to get them, so maybe when they arrive, I'll do a little video review and tell you guys what I think. The first are these Eurorack LED plugs. They're little LEDs attached to a male TS, eighth inch, so they plug right into a jack in your Eurorack or a stackable. They take the signal and the brightness shows you the amplitude, and the color shows the polarity. If you're DIY inclined, you could of course build one of these for pretty cheap. I'm probably going to build more myself if I like them, but for now, I'm happy to try out what this Etsy seller is offering because I love supporting small DIY manufacturers. Next are these Eurorack contact mics made by Error Instruments. I always love watching the experiments that people do with contact microphones and their modular synths. I also love watching people clip their contact microphones to a plant, for example, and see what the plant has to say over the microphone. It's an awesome way to expand the scope of your Eurorack system to include the world around you. This is another thing that you could probably DIY if you spent a couple minutes with a soldering iron, but I'm happy to buy one of these, check it out, and support an independent DIY Etsy seller. And the final Etsy item on our list is this keychain full of a couple of different synth tools for accessing jacks on your modular, unscrewing things, a resistor tool, and it all comes on a little key ring. You choose the color, it snaps onto your keychain, so you have these tools because you might not have, say, a set of hex sockets at any given time. And last but not least, for the DIY, repair inclined synth enthusiast in your life, a multimeter is a great gift. You can get one for as little as 12 bucks, or you can go up to a fancy high-end multimeter like a Fluke, which could cost a couple hundred bucks. The reliability and the accuracy of the expensive multimeter is obviously better, but the difference between a $12 multimeter and a $200 multimeter is nothing compared to having one versus not having one when you need one. My expensive multimeter actually died on me, so I've been using a cheap one for a couple months now. So even if you don't DIY your own synths, a little multimeter is a great tool to have in your arsenal because you can always use it to troubleshoot whether signal is getting somewhere, whether something has power, whether something is connected to something else, whether you have a short in your system, etc. It's good to have one around. If this video helped you pick out a synthesizer related 
If this video helped you pick out a synthesizer related gift, let me know in the comments below and hit that subscribe and smash that like button. And as always, we will see you next time. You're a puppy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there she goes. Okay. Simmer down. The camera loves you, Luna. Yep. Okay. All right, come down. Oh, there we go. Oh, smart puppy. <laughs>